Hi, I'm Clever Ghoul, but you can call me Nikki. And this week, we're making a house plant. Well, we're making a disco house plant. So a little while ago, I was at Goodwill and I found this incredible pot planter that was shaped like a skull. And I knew I wanted to disco tile it. And I did that in my own free time one night. I did film it and I might upload it to TikTok if we still have TikTok. So I took this planter and I put disco tiles all over it and it was amazing, but it needed a plant inside. I don't know about you, but I'm sure as you know, I, I have a cat. So a lot of the times I can't actually have house plants or if I do, they're outside because she will try to eat them. And regardless of if they're non-toxic or not, I just don't wanna deal with that. So for me, making a house plant out of paper mache or plaster sounded like a pretty good idea. And then once I thought about making a fake plant, I decided I also wanted it to be a disco plant to go with the disco planter because, you know, you can't have enough disco. Maybe you can? but I can't. So when I thought about plants that I wanted to make, I knew that I wanted to do a Monstera Albo. They're a really rare plant. They're variegated, which means they have a lot of white and greens going on in them. Sometimes some of the leaves can even be just split right down the middle of green and white. It's really cool, but they're also really, really expensive because they're really rare. When I say really expensive, I mean really expensive, like hundreds if not a thousand dollars for a cutting, for just a partial plant, for a full plant, I'm sure it's over a thousand dollars. It's pretty wild. So yeah, never gonna spend that much on a plant, but they are gorgeous and I love them. So I thought to myself, let's make a Monstera Albo plant, which means I could use just the regular clear mirrored tiles and incorporate some green mirror tiles as well. So let's get into it. To start this project, I pulled out some chipboard and started drawing some leaf shapes on them. I created a few different ones just to get the different fenestrations and markings and shapes and sizes that I wanted. And then I cut them out and lightly scored down the middle so that I could bend them and give them a slightly more three-dimensional effect. When I started this project, I was debating between doing paper mache or using plaster strips, and I decided why not do both? So for two of the leaves, I ended up using these plaster strips, and for the other two, I did paper mache. So I started with plaster strips, but before I got into using them, I actually added some tape to kind of help keep the, the bend in the leaf shape. The basic process of doing the plaster was as follows. I would cut the strip, dip it in cool water for a few seconds, wring it out, get the excess water out, and then place it over the chipboard and try and smooth it out. I would spread it all over the whole leaf and then I would blow dry it a little bit and then come back in and do another layer. I also waited for a while in between doing the fronts and the backs just to make sure the front was really, really dry before adding in the back pieces. For the paper mache, I used some scrap paper I had on hand. I used Mod Podge to coat it and then stick it on to the leaf. So I guess really this was more of almost like a decoupage situation than true paper mache, but that that's the method I went with. I would do one layer, let it dry, do the back, let it dry, do the front again, let it dry. And I repeated that process maybe two or three times over all of the leaves. When it came to both the plaster and the paper mache, I wanted to make sure both leaves were sturdy enough to hold the tiles, but not too heavy that they would topple over and not too thick. So that's why I ended up using both these methods because really I just wanted to test out which one worked better. While the leaves were drying, I ended up taking some armature wire, twisting it and making the stems. Basically, I just took a piece, folded it in half, twisted it up and bent it like this. I'm using my hands. I don't know if any of that makes sense, but that's what I did. Then I had some used foil from previous projects and I glued and taped that on to the stems themselves to make them a little bit thicker and sturdier. And then I coated the stems in masking tape to create a base layer before I ended up also paper mache in those stems. I did the same paper mache process that I had done previously with the leaves and it ended up working out perfectly for the stems. Next, I attached the leaves and basically what I did is I would bend the wire to fit where I wanted it to hit the leaf and I I would just coat it in a ton of hot glue like really a ton of hot glue. And then once those were dry, I took them outside and sprayed them with a sealing spray just to make sure that everything was really sealed in together and locked down before painting. Once those had dried off, I decided it was time to paint on the leaves. I started with the paper mache leaves and I mapped out where I wanted the green sections and the white sections to be. And then I just took some acrylic craft paint and started painting. I started with green going in layer by layer and then I added in the white after. I just wanna be clear that this isn't a perfect painting job and 
that's because it doesn't need to be. Since I'm covering the majority of this with mirror tiles, I really wanted to have a background where if there were gaps in between the tiles, it wouldn't be glaringly obvious. When it came to painting the plaster leaves, I didn't actually map anything out. I just looked at reference on my iPad as I painted on. With both the paper mache and plaster leaves, once I did the tops, I would do the bottoms as well to mimic the markings on top of the leaves. And I also ended up painting both stems green. I wanted to make sure the stems would stay pliable and movable if I wanted to adjust them in the end, so I didn't end up covering them in mirror tiles or anything else, just paint. Once all the paint was dry, I took both of the stems outside, sprayed them again with the sealer spray paint, and then I let them dry before moving on to tiles. Now that it's time to tile, I basically just followed the shape of the leaf, the direction the markings were going, and just started tiling. Thankfully, these tiles are self-adhesive, so there wasn't a lot of extra work. I was worried, however, that when it came to the plaster that I would need to glue each tile down because I wasn't sure that it would adhere to such a bumpy textured surface, but it ended up sticking just fine, which was a major relief. So I continued adding tiles on all the leaves and then that was that. Now these are kind of heavy. So my last piece that I didn't get on film was me finding something to attach them to that was heavy before sticking them into the pot and then covering the pot with some brown craft paper, recycled paper to mimic what the dirt would be in the pot. If you're attaching these to something, you might want to use foam, but I just wanted to use found materials or random things that I had on hand that I knew would work and didn't really need to be used for anything else. So that's what I did. So now it's time for the reveal. Ta-da! So here she is, all done up in her skull vase. She's truly beautiful, something to behold. I'm so happy with how it turned out. In my living room, I have some privacy film over the windows that makes rainbows, and I put this near that, and it just lights up the whole living room in the afternoon, which is great. So yeah, I'm so thrilled with it. I honestly want to make all the disco plants now. What kind of disco plant would you make? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week. Bye.